Hey everyone, welcome back to Lavender. Today's video is on how to create a personal brand and how to grow your brand. And this video is for creatives and entrepreneurs, but everybody else, because whether you like it or not, in this digital age, everybody has a personal brand. If you have any account online, a Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, anything, that is your personal brand. And a personal brand is how people perceive you. It's like your online persona and whether you like it or not, people will judge you based on what they see online. Like if you're applying for jobs, your employers will be Googling you and they will be judging you based on what they find. So this video is helpful for everyone. The first step to building a personal brand is to start with why. Why do you want a brand? What is your purpose for building a brand? So so for example, if you're a graphic designer, you want to build a personal brand so that other people will know who you are and they will know what your artwork looks like, what your style is, so that they will be able to hire you for your services. So your goal is to get people to see you, see your work and want to hire you. Depending on your purpose for your brands, you're going to want to have a home or some sort of landing page where other people can come to learn more about who you are, what you do, all of that. So it can be a website or a blog, but it can also be like a social media page. And we'll go over choosing the right platform for your brand later on. But if you are a professional and you want to be taken seriously, then I highly recommend getting a personalized domain name to be your landing page. So a great place to find a personal domain is actually Hover. So I'd like to thank Hover for sponsoring today's video. Hover is a website where you can just search up different domain names to purchase a domain for your brand landing page. And it's really easy to use. Hover has a really clean user interface. And there's also something called Hover Connect, which allows you to connect your domain main name to a whole list of website builders with just a few simple clicks. For example, I use WordPress for my blog and website and I use Shopify for my shop. So with Hover, it's really easy to connect the domain name that you want with any platform that you want to use. More importantly is you get a personalized email that matches your domain name that further supports your personal brand. You just seem much more professional emailing people with that personalized domain and also like handing it out on your business cards. For example, when I decided to start Lavender as a brand, one of the first things I did was buy a domain and create that email with Lavender in it so that I could put that on a business card and start marketing myself as, you know, Lavender. So if you guys are interested in getting a personal domain through Hover, I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out. Now, what if you don't have a name for your brand yet and you're still deciding on what name to use? Some people just use their real names. I used to use my real name for music and I realized that using my name, Eileen Sue, it was difficult for people to spell. It was difficult for people people to pronounce so that's why I wanted to create like a new word for my brand name. Choosing a name can be tough but I don't want you to let yourself get stuck at that point. Some people can't decide on a name and so they don't start on building their brand. I think that's the biggest mistake. Just start with anything create content, practice and build it. And you can always change your brand name later. I've seen so many people rebrand themselves and it's totally okay. So to give my tips on choosing a name, let me just share how I chose the name Lavender because that is one of the most frequently asked questions of my channel of all time. Back then when I was brainstorming names for my new personal brand, number one, I wanted the name to suit the brand that I wanted to create. This goes back to your brand's purpose. So for me, I wanted to create something inspirational, empowering, beautiful meaningful and I had like a list of words that I really liked and I just started like combining different words together so the first tip is your brand name should embody what your brand stands for in some sort of way number two was I wanted to create a new word that didn't already appear on Google I wanted to create something fresh so that when someone googled the name lavender I would be like the first search results because a lot of people make the mistake of choosing a great name but like a million people already have have it so definitely choose something that is a little different I think by now it's really hard to think of something original but it's totally possible and I know you can do it just keep trying make sure the name is not heavily used by other people already especially not people who are in the industry that you want to be in lastly you want to have a name that's relatively easy to remember easy to spell and can be consistent on all your social platforms so you want to have like the same account name everywhere so that it's easy for people to find you. Next, let's talk about shaping your brand's story, tone, style, the feeling that your brand exudes. So naturally, if it's a personal brand where you are the face of it, the brand should be an extension of your personality, an extension of who you are. It should even be like your ideal self, what you want 
to appear to others to be because everybody's multifaceted you know what i share on lavender is a big part of me but it's not all of me i have other sides too but it's really the part that you want to put forth first to other people and this is a really fun part because you get to shape your own story and decide what story matters to your brand what does your brand stand for essentially what are the values what are the personality traits things like that so number one it goes back to your brand story why are you a brand what is your purpose as a brand what is the message that you want to share with others so your story and your why is the core center and then outside of it is like the aesthetics and the tone and the feeling and the decorative parts so the decorative parts for example with lavender are like the dreamy vibes the pastel colors the music all of that is like decorative and it's what makes your brand unique and different to put it simply just look at yourself you at your core you have a purpose you have something that you stand for you have values that's your core the core of your brand as well and then everything that you do on the outside the makeup you put on the clothes you wear how you style your hair, how you speak, that is like the embellishments of your brand, but it's super important because it makes you who you are. To make it easy, a brand style is your style. It's just an extension of your personality. I try to infuse as much of my personality into my brand in everything, in the captions that I write, in the photos I take, the way I filter them, the way that I angle my shots. All of that just comes from you and your expression. And I would say don't overthink it. Just start with like your favorite color palette. Start with your favorite styles from other people that you see. And I promise you, your brand will grow stronger as you develop it, as you keep creating. Similar to life, you find your voice along the way as you go, and that's totally normal. Next, let's talk about content because content is king. Content is the way that you communicate your brand to people who are willing to listen. Content is your way of expressing yourself again and again, expressing all the different sides of yourself so that people around you will understand more and more who you are. The first part of this is to to pick your platform, your main medium for sharing your content and sharing who you are. So with so many platforms out there, it's hard to do all of them at once. If you're starting a personal brand, I recommend you focus and be an expert at like one platform first before, you know, diversifying to others. When choosing a platform to focus on, you want to consider number one, your brand's purpose. Number two, what you're good at creating, what you enjoy creating. Number three, the best way to present your brand to others and number four is where your audience lives for example if you're an interior designer and your work is very visual then you probably want to stick to visual platforms like instagram or pinterest to share your designs if for example the interior designer feels like she's better at video and loves to be on camera then maybe she could do youtube and mix that another example is if you're a real estate agent and you don't like to be on camera but you love listening to podcasts then you could create like a podcast giving real estate advice for people who are buying their first homes. You get to choose the platform that works for you depending on what you like, what works for your brand, and where your audience lives. Back to content. So as I was saying earlier, content is your way of communicating who you are and your expertise to all the people who are willing to watch you. So the more content you create and the more consistent you are with posting your content, the more opportunities you give to others to see you, see your stuff, to know and understand who you are. So it's all about just creating consistent but how do you create content that people want to see? First, you got to make sure that your content delivers value to others. It has to educate them, entertain them, inspire them, give them something in exchange. You know, people are not just going to watch you for you. They're going to watch it because it benefits themselves. Do some research and find what people are searching for and create content related to those areas. We can go deep into this topic and I've actually made another video that goes in depth on advice for creatives. So I'm just going to leave that down below so that you can check that out. The last tip that I want to slip in that I actually should have mentioned earlier is know who you want to serve. Know your ideal audience, your ideal customer, and create content for that person. So have this persona in your mind, like really go in depth of who this person is, their fears, their deepest desires, their hobbies, everything, and really envision that person and create content for that one person. That is the last tip that I'll leave you with. Again, like I said, I can really go on forever talking about this topic. So if you have more questions or if you want me to make more videos on this topic, leave it down below so I know. Love you all so much and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.